three months ago, my wife decided to leave me. Recently, she reached out to me, tearfully pleading for another chance to reconcile our marriage. Initially, I refused her pleas, and to make matters worse, it feels like everyone around me is taking my side. I'm desperately seeking advice from strangers to navigate this challenging situation. To fully grasp the complexity of what's happening, let me provide some context. Seven years ago, I married the woman I had always dreamed of being with, let's call her Denise for privacy. We had been in a loving relationship for two years prior to our marriage, and everything seemed perfect, almost like a fairy tale come true. However, shortly after we tied the knot, things began to change drastically. Denise started experiencing persistent feelings of sadness and detachment. Concerned for her well-being, I encouraged her to see a doctor, who then referred her to a therapist. Through therapy, we discovered that Denise was battling depression, stemming from unresolved issues in her past that she had been trying to suppress. Determined to support her through this difficult time, I took on the majority of the household responsibilities, even though I was working a demanding 40-hour work week. I assured her that I was there for her whenever she needed to talk, hoping that my support would help her regain her footing. This commitment lasted for six and a half years, during which Denise continued to struggle with her depression. She spent most of her days in bed, constantly complaining and doing very little else. Our relationship suffered immensely, there was no intimacy, no physical affection, no social outings. My days were consumed by work and maintaining the household, returning home to a messy environment that I had to clean up before preparing dinner and handling other chores. By the end of each day, I was utterly exhausted, only to be met with Denise unloading more of her troubles and complaints about herself and our situation. This constant strain took a toll on my social life as well. I couldn't spend time with my friends because Denise would incessantly call me, expressing her fears and anxieties, making it impossible to find any respite. Despite having little time for a social life anyway, I continued to persevere, holding on to the hope that Denise would eventually overcome her depression and we could enjoy a fulfilling life together. I loved her deeply and believed in the vows we had taken for better or worse, even though things were clearly deteriorating, perhaps reaching the lowest point they could ever be. About four months ago, Denise began seeing a new therapist. Three months into this new therapy, her therapist recommended that she take some time away from me. The reasoning was that her depression had roots in our marriage, and I might be inadvertently contributing to her mental health struggles. Hearing this was devastating. I found myself engulfed in self-doubt, questioning my actions and whether I was to blame. Beneath these feelings, there was a growing sense of resentment. I had sacrificed so much for Denise, years of my life spent working tirelessly and managing the household, only to be met with a sense of ingratitude. It felt like my efforts were in vain, and I began to believe that perhaps it was my fault that Denise was so unhappy. Despite these swirling emotions, I tried to push them aside and communicate openly with her, but ultimately, Denise decided to leave. She chose to stay with her mother, stating that she needed time away from me to address her depression, attributing some of her struggles to my presence in her life. The details of our final argument are hazy in my memory, but what followed was a month of relentless attempts to reach out to Denise and her family. I called her repeatedly, begged for her to come back, and humiliated myself by apologizing for every possible wrong I might have committed. During this time, I reached a point of utter despair, contemplating ending my own life because I felt so hopeless. However, as the month passed, an unexpected sense of relief began to wash over me. Coming home was peaceful and quiet, allowing me to finally engage in hobbies that I had neglected for years. The house was no longer a constant source of stress, and I could unwind each evening. Within two months, I even rediscovered the joy of spending time with my friends, enjoying a beer and embracing life once more. Gradually, it dawned on me that I had been miserable for so long. This realization deepened over time, leading me to the stark truth that I no longer loved Denise the way I once did. I felt like my youth was slipping away, and I deserved so much more than the life I was living, feeling more like a caretaker for someone who was emotionally incapacitated than a loving husband. Despite my outward appearance remaining intact and starting to regain my self-confidence as I ventured out more, attracting attention and feeling desired again, the emotional toll was immense. Then, out of the blue, I received a call from Denise. She was in tears, confessing that she had made a grave mistake by leaving and had foolishly taken her therapist's advice to heart. She professed her love for me, and for a fleeting moment, I felt the urge to welcome her back with open arms. However, instead of responding positively, I found myself unable to. I abruptly told her that she had abandoned me and that our relationship was over. I informed her that I would be filing for divorce, expressing that I had already wasted too much time trying to make things work. This final act sealed the end of our marriage. After hanging up, I allowed myself to cry for a while before going to bed, feeling an overwhelming sense of liberation. 
Now, my family is adamant that I'm making a mistake by not taking Denise back. They argue that I owe it to her to try and salvage our marriage, reminding me that relationships aren't always easy. However, I can't remember the last time I actually had fun in our marriage. It has been a constant state of misery, never going out, never enjoying each other's company. We're both still young, yet we're stuck in this unhappy routine. The last time we were intimate was over a year ago. To Denise, I feel like nothing more than a servant, and I can't imagine enduring another hour of taking care of her. On the other hand, I'm plagued with self-doubt. Am I truly ending things with someone who is struggling with depression? I feel awful about my decision, like I've failed her in some way. I desperately need advice. In response to some comments, I want to clarify that Denise did not engage in any infidelity during our separation. I appreciate everyone who reached out with support, advice, and insightful comments. While there were some who were argumentative, insulting, or trying to involve me in controversial movements like MGTOW, the majority of responses were constructive and relatable, especially from those who have been in similar situations or were the ones dealing with depression themselves. Their perspectives have provided me with insights I hadn't previously considered. I apologize for not being able to respond to every single comment. The volume was overwhelming, and I struggled to keep up. However, I made sure to read almost all the messages, so your advice didn't go unnoticed, and I truly appreciate it. After reflecting deeply on my situation, I contemplated whether I could give Denise another chance. My initial post revealed that I was emotionally unstable, struggling to manage my feelings. My responses to comments showed fluctuations, sometimes nostalgic and forgiving, other times resentful and angry. I admit that I haven't been in the best emotional state, but over the past few days, I've been working on controlling my emotions better. I'm feeling more stable now compared to a week ago, but I know it will take time to fully recover from everything that's happened. Recently, I decided to provide an update to share what transpired this week that influenced my decision making. After much contemplation, I recognized that, regardless of what others suggested, the decision to continue or end my marriage had to be mine alone. It wasn't something my parents, Denise's parents, friends, or even people on the internet could decide for me. It was a choice I had to live with every day. Realizing that I would likely regret not at least talking to Denise for closure, I took the step to invite her back home to discuss our relationship, our future, and her depression, essentially laying everything out on the table. It's impossible to recount our entire conversation, as it delved into deeply personal matters that I wouldn't feel comfortable sharing. Instead, I'll provide a summary. We discussed every aspect of our relationship, and I must say, it was incredibly awkward and confrontational. I had pent-up emotions that I couldn't contain, making it difficult not to start yelling. I expressed my exhaustion, pointing out that nothing we had been trying was working. I told her that I felt like a doormat, that she wasn't the person I married, and that these past three months without her had been liberating. I conveyed my frustration, telling her that she wasn't making any effort to help herself or contribute around the house. I emphasized that marriage is supposed to be a partnership, but I felt like I was essentially married to myself, bearing the burden alone. I shared with her the deep regrets I felt about the day I married her, which understandably hurt her. Denise admitted that she was aware of my unhappiness and acknowledged that she hadn't been a good partner. She explained that despite her efforts, she often ended up feeling fearful and demotivated, which led her to believe that she was a burden to me rather than someone I needed to support. She admitted that she had handled things poorly, blaming the therapist as a convenient excuse, even though the therapist had only guided her towards this decision. Denise expressed guilt, saying it was exacerbating her mental state, and she hated seeing me exhausted from work, coming home only to clean up after her until I was too tired to function. This conversation marked a significant turning point for Denise. She began admitting many of her shortcomings and apologizing for her behavior throughout our marriage. Taking time away had made her realize how much I meant to her and how much she had taken me for granted. She acknowledged that she should have made more of an effort a long time ago. In response, I admitted that I felt I had been enabling her by managing her medication and picking up after her which may have made it easier for her to fall back into her depression. After hours of intense discussion, we ended up hugging for what felt like over an hour before continuing our conversation. Denise expressed that she understood if I chose not to take her back and that she accepted if I no longer trusted her to improve. She acknowledged my exhaustion and asked for one more chance, promising to do anything to make things right. Initially, my instinct was to reject her plea entirely, not wanting to reopen old wounds. However, during our talk, I saw the person I once loved, she was taking responsibility for her actions and seemed different in some way. Despite knowing the risks involved in giving her another chance, I decided not to give up so easily. I agreed to try, but with strict conditions. 
I laid out a series of requirements she had to meet before we could consider rebuilding our relationship. First, Denise needed to secure a part-time job, regardless of the type, whether it was waiting tables, working in a clothing store, or any other position. The key was consistency, showing up every scheduled time, dressing appropriately, and performing her duties to the best of her ability. Second, since I enjoy going to the gym, I requested that she join me at least three times a week to get back into shape and engage in regular exercise, keeping herself busy in a healthy manner. Third, Denise was to help her parents around the house while staying with them, eliminating the habit of isolating herself in her room. This meant contributing to daily tasks like grocery shopping, doing the dishes, vacuuming, and making a genuine effort to be productive each day. Fourth, as some had suggested, we would go on a date once a week, committing to leaving the house, overcoming self-consciousness, and making no more excuses to avoid social interactions. Fifth, we would resume couples counseling, acknowledging that although our previous attempts hadn't succeeded, we were willing to try again. Sixth, Denise would start seeing a new therapist, committing to honesty and following the therapist's guidance without withholding information. Seventh, if the therapist recommended medication, Denise would take it consistently as prescribed. I would hold on to the medication, ensuring she took it in my presence to prevent forgetfulness or refusal. If the current medication caused issues, we would explore alternatives, but the commitment to adhere to the prescribed regimen was non-negotiable. I explained to Denise that once she met all these conditions and maintained them for several months, we could then move forward with repairing our relationship. Until then, there was no possibility of continuing our marriage. I acknowledged that ultimatums are generally frowned upon in relationship advice, but I felt I had no other choice given the circumstances. To my surprise, Denise agreed to these terms. Even more unexpectedly, within just two days, she began helping her parents around the house and actively searching for jobs. Her father even mentioned that she seemed much more cheerful lately. I understand that this is just the beginning of a long and uncertain journey. There's a significant chance that our efforts might not lead to reconciliation, and I must remain cautious not to get my hopes up too soon. Nevertheless, I am genuinely hoping to rebuild my marriage and feel that I owe it to myself to give Denise this one last opportunity. Some may call me foolish for offering her this chance, but perhaps that's a risk I need to take. This is my update, and I'm unsure if I'll provide another one in the future. Initially, I hadn't planned to share this update, but I want to express my gratitude to everyone who responded to my previous post. Your insights and advice have been invaluable, and I sincerely hope that all of you find happiness in your own lives.